Just the other day, I noticed that my Mercedes was seeping out of some of the oil cooler lines. And now these oil cooler lines are pretty imperative for the health of your vehicle because if they go bad entirely, like they blow off or something, you're gonna empty your oil sump in a matter of a few seconds at highway speeds. So you really gotta stay on top of this as a maintenance item. If you look down in here, you'll see our two oil cooler lines right down here. Now, one comes up to this top oil cooler line and one goes way down in there to the bottom one that's very difficult to see but essentially those two lines are our lines right here I think I need a new Dremel come on Those bearings are real healthy. There we go. Oh, I should also mention, I have a drain pan down below because we might lose some oil. There we go. The method I'm replacing mine with is not the OEM, the factory method of replacing the entire hard line because the nuts that hold those lines to the oil coolers, I have had bad experiences in the past with those just stripping out the oil coolers and I don't like the idea of having to replace my entire oil cooler and lines just because I need a new section of rubber. Okay, so there is our ferrule removed and now what we don't want to do is we don't want to cut through the very end of this because we would end up nicking the steel hose. So we want to just kind of cut through all of it down on the rubber and then come up and stop just short of hitting the steel hose. And then at that point we can cut the other three off and get this replaced. So I'm going to cut the other three off and get these hoses removed. Now I'm going to take a knife and just slice this rubber a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to Pry it off of the metal cup. That 40 year old rubber is pretty stiff. We have it, and our drain pan we need to scoop right there. That's all right. Catching our oil nicely. So, slice off these other three spots. You may be asking yourself, how will I know when I've got the lower hose off? The, the, the resounding evidence will present itself somehow. Don't want to get it too hot, just mildly more pliable. Let's make sure that this clamp will actually fit over it. Will it? Of course not. The clamps that actually ended up working with this hose and my car is 25.6 millimeter open, 22.4 closed. And of course, I'm going to make sure that down in the description of this video, there's a link to all the various tools and things that I used so you can get the right clamps, the right hose, and all the stuff to handle this on your car, should you decide to do it this way. Make sure you got your clamps on there for both sides too. You know what, we might go straight to the warming it up a notch so that it's softer. This rubber is very, very heavy duty stuff. It's only on fire a little bit. A little fire never hurt anybody. A lot of fire has hurt people. So you know, be, be careful to limit the volume of fire you have in uh, close proximity. Uh, 
catch your breath and then we're going to crimp those fittings down. Here's my plan. I'm going to take this one, just put it up here, and then I can crimp this one. Right here. That. Another one on. Right above that. Go. Well, that's one line. Now I've got to do our lower line, and basically, same process. We're going to stick our clamps on after we get one side on, and then get our other side on and clamp it down. There we have it. That is our new oil cooler lines all installed and that's all there is to it. Some may argue that it may be better to unscrew those fittings and just replace the whole thing, but I really don't like the idea of replacing something that doesn't need to be replaced. So all the hard lines are fine on my car and a lot of times removing those fittings from the oil cooler, they just end up tearing the oil cooler up and then you've got to find a new oil cooler. And let's face it, as these cars get older and older, the prices of everything goes up and up and it gets harder and harder to find those parts. So any way in my mind that I can fix something using off the shelf parts and off the shelf supplies that will be readily available for years and years to come, like a Whitaker clamps and transmission cooler line, it is a no brainer because that's something that I'm not at the uh, mercy of whatever company is making aftermarket parts for these cars to continue making parts and not charge exorbitant amounts. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. If you've got leaky or seeping oil cooler lines, might be something worth replacing whichever way you decide to do it, whether the clamp method like I did, or you want to try replacing the entire hard line and everything. Either way, you should be prepared for what you've got to do now. Thanks for watching.